What does recital makeup need to look like? I'm going to show you. <laughs> Good day everyone, I'm Stella DeFox and this is my Colorful Life. It's recital season, which means recital makeup. This is Ruby. Hi. She's a dancer. <laughs> and we've done this a few times. But um, you may wonder why, why do they want my kid to wear makeup for a recital? Because she's beautiful. She doesn't need any makeup. And that's totally true. This face does not need a touch of makeup. They're perfect. But when they get on stage with those stage lights, their features are going to be washed out and we're not really going to be able to see their expressions. <laughs> and your facial expressions are part of the choreography, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to miss out on their choreography of their beautiful expressions. So we're going to do makeup to make sure that their features pop and that they're all visible on stage. And then we can all enjoy the performance, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so one thing that I find has been very helpful is to get your child to scooch down in a chair so that their head is resting right against the back. Oh, so this is so when you're going at them with a makeup brush, their head's not moving away from you. You can't <laughs> actually reach them. Of course, we won't need those while we're doing makeup. And always a good idea. Put that away. All right, first I'm going to start with foundation. I like to use a kabuki brush because it gives you really light coverage and it's fast and easy and it feels nice on the skin. So they're not like, mom, what are you doing? That hurts. You start in the middle and work your way out. Now we don't need a lot of coverage with these young girls with perfect skin, but as they get older and become teenagers and when you have some blemishes to deal with, then you might want to use uh, a makeup sponge applicator damp and then use that dabbing on the makeup and that will give you uh, better coverage. Again, starting in the middle and moving your way out. Okay. I'll move on to the cheeks. You want some blush so that they have some nice color on stage and they're not just pasty white because they will look like ghosts if we don't put anything on those cheeks. <laughs> so have, have your child smile. So you can see those apples pop out, apples of their cheeks. And just swirl it on. Now this is simple makeup that you're doing on your kids. We're not doing any crazy highlighting or contouring. They don't need that. Just color and highlighting their features. If you're worried about that being blended, you can always use your powder brush again or a kabuki. Blend that in. There, rosy like a doll. <laughs> For uh, eyeshadow, I'm using a Sephora palette, but you really don't need anything complicated. I'm going to be using white, the nude color, and brown. That's it, very simple. If you have eyeshadow primer, uh, I would use it on your child because it really makes the eyeshadow stay put and if they're performing a lot, they're going to get sweaty, right? Close your eyes. And this will help the makeup stick to the eye, sh to the eyelid and not spread all over their face. So first I'm just using a really basic brush and the nude color across the base of the lid. Okay. 
and very gently pull up on their eyebrow just to smooth out the eyelid and make applying easier. Next I'm taking white, a matte white with no shimmer or glitter. I'm putting that across the top of the lid right below the eyebrow. All the way down into the corner. So it looks really, really white, but that's the point. You're going for maximum contrast between this light color and then the brown that you're going to do af afterwards. So now I'm using sort of a pointed brush, pointed but soft, with brown. And this is just going to go in the crease. Close. Now sometimes the tricky part is these little eyelids hardly have a crease because their lids are just so small. So you just sweep back and forth the crease of the eye so it's nice and blended. Open. And just check to make sure that it's just above, open again, just above where their eye opens you can see a little bit of the shadow. Close again. So I think that's good, good placement of the shadow. Sweep back and forth just to make sure it's nice and blended, you don't have any hard lines. white again over top just to make sure that that didn't get overshadowed again. I don't bother with uh, shading in eyebrows on the girls. The eyebrows are plenty thick enough. If Say your child has very, very fine eyebrows, very, very blonde, then you might want to use a little bit of fill-in. But we're good, right? Yep. 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 You're off. Yep. You close? Okay, next you're gonna wanna do black eyeliner. Uh, you can use a pencil, although I find that it pulls on the eyelid more and it's more annoying to do, especially on somebody else when you don't know how hard it's pulling. So my favorite, this is Laura Mercier. It's a, um, a cake eyeliner and it's the kind that you would use a brush, an eyeliner brush, something that's very skinny, and water. So this is my trick. This is a hairspray cap. I put a little bit of water in there, dip my brush in, and then it's just wet enough to activate this cake eyeliner and get a bit on your brush. And close. Now the reason why I like this style of eyeliner is because all you have to do is touch the lid and you've got your line. You don't have to drag and pull, you just touch. I uh, like to pull up on the eyelid a little bit so you can get at the eyelash line. So you want this to go right in the eyelashes. You don't want it really thick, just enough to define eyes. Nice. And 
Ruby is really great at sitting still while I do this, which is pretty amazing. Not all kids are, are able to sit so calmly while they get their makeup done, especially when you're starting out when it's your first time. So, get close. My other daughter, who has a really hard time holding her eyes um, relaxed and closed, I actually had her try doing makeup herself on herself, just so she can get a feel for it. And then she was slightly less freaked out the last time, the next time that I tried doing it. It went a little bit better. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now I want you to look straight ahead over here. Just keep look straight at it, looking straight ahead. Open a little bit more. Let's see if I can get that spot. Okay, look straight ahead. There. <laughs> this is best, of course, if you can take your time. Close. But I know what recital evenings are like. They're busy. Everybody's got to change, you got to eat, you got to get to the hair and the makeup done and then get to the venue and stretch and warm up and it's, it's busy, hey? Okay, so I think the top lids look good. They're lined, they're not super thick, they're just, just enough. Okay, look up. Now we're going to do the bottom. Just the lash line. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this part's a little more blanky. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do the other eye. Look up. Way up, way up at the light. Okay. Take a breather. Take a rest. <laughs> okay? Better? Okay. I'm just gonna go over that eyeliner again while the camera is closer. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm close. So again, with the liquid, all you have to do is touch the lid with the brush and your line is there. Much simpler than dragging across with a pencil and having to push hard. We'll just pull up a little bit and get at those lashes. Pull up the lid and touch the lashes. And look up. This part often gets a little bit messy and smudgy while we're working because there's a lot of blinking going on and twitching Ooh. and things happen and that's okay. We can fix that. So I like these eye tees that you can get at Sally Winners. I like them because they're very pointy. They're a very pointy tip. And then a little bit of makeup remover. So I just dip it in. And I'll squeeze a little bit out on a tissue or a towel so it's not too wet. Now look up. And we're going to clean up all of those smudges that are under there. There's the dry side. Look up. But. Look up. <laughs> yes, yes, you're very pretty. I'm beautiful. 
Now after that cleanup, sometimes you'll realize that you need to go back with your foundation under there because you removed it all. So, a little more foundation again. And this time I will use the makeup applicator. Look up. And just dot that in there. Yeah. Makes me blink every time. That's okay. You can be blinky. Not too blinky. Look up. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Now Ruby has super long lashes, but they're also really straight. So they stick straight out of her eyes. <laughs> So we do try to curl them a little bit, just not super easy. So eyelashes, we gotta aim them right in there, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so look straight ahead. You gotta squeeze as close to the eyelid as possible without, of course, pinching the eyelid. Yeah, we gotta move a curl. <laughs> I think you got my eyelid. Did I? I got your eyelid a little bit. That's why you pinch very slowly in case you catch something and you get plenty of warning. <sighs> Good. Okay, mascara. Another tricky part. Okay, so the trick to mascara is you need their eyes open, but not super open and not super close. So look at my elbow. Generally, when they look at your elbow, their eyes are kind of at the right level for doing mascara. And you can keep your thumb on their lid. And then any extra brushes, instead of touching their lid, is just gonna touch your thumb. So it protects the lid from getting any smudges. Goodness, those are long. <laughs> I only have eyelashes like that when I got extensions. Now try not to blink, because then you'll get mascara on your bottom lid. <laughs> okay. So now we're looking at the elbow again. Now keep your eye there because I have to move my elbow for this eye. Uh, yeah. Is it harder when you don't have that focus? Yeah. I'm looking at the tree. The tree? Outside? Yeah. Outside our window? Yeah. Uh. Now I tend to not do mascara on the bottom lashes when they're performing oh. because I find that the lights just uh, will catch on the bottom lashes and then create a shadow under the eye, which we don't want to do. So the one eye we did get a little bit of smudgy from the blinking. From the blinking. <laughs> with the mascara. Mm -hmm. Look up. Okay, we're gonna finish off the face with some loose powder. Oh, yes, she is! <laughs> Back with the kabuki brush. <laughs> okay, close your eyes. So, especially right down the middle, where if they do get sweaty, that's where it's gonna happen first. Just to control shine and lock in their makeup. Look up. Uh, can I breathe? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, look up. Don't get my shirt. <laughs> no. 
Okay, so last is lips. This one's a bit controversial. Some people say just a little bit of gloss, but in my These opinion, are the peoples. yeah. I say a little bit of gloss. Yeah, not me. I say red. Oh. What? I know, crazy, <gasps> right? You think red is like the color of pinups and and like vampires or something? Me too. <laughs> what? Vampires? So. But red on stage looks the most natural with the stage lights. So it's just giving your daughter's face and their lips color. They're not gonna look like they have bright red lipstick. So I'm going to start with a red lip liner. I gave this a sharpen so that it'd be nice and precise. I don't open quite so much. You just want their Lips to be kind of spread sideways in a smile a little bit so they're stretched. If your hand is feeling unsteady, just put your pinky on their chin. Can you smile more? Good. So the lip liner is going to help keep that lipstick in its place so your daughter doesn't have red lipstick all over her face. Step back just to see that things are even. Good. Now when it comes to the color red that you're going to use, the best that I've found is a really neutral red. If you can consider red a neutral, you don't want something that's too orange or something that's too pink or something that's too brown. Just a classic clean red, whether it's a lipstick I think this one is a little bit on the orangey side. But I really like this one. It's by NARS. And it looks like a pencil, but it is a lipstick, but it really, really stays put. It doesn't go anywhere, and it's not really creamy so that it tends to wander off across the face. So this one I like a lot. Open a little bit more. If you do decide to use a lipstick, I do find that a lipstick brush does make it easier. Easier to spread. Lipstick itself I find easier on myself. Open more. On someone else. I do like to use a brush. Open more. Good. If you get any smudges, you can use these things again. Over in the corner. Sometimes I like to go back in with just a little bit of foundation just to strengthen up that line again. Also something I do on myself when I need to. There we go. You look good. 
Now, of course, this is way too much makeup for a little kid to be wearing, unless they're on stage. So what do you think? You feel good? Yep. <laughs> yep. So these are my tips for doing your kids' recital makeup. Now, I want to know if you have tips from doing your own kids' recital makeup. If you do, drop them in the comments below so we can all share on your wisdom. Hit this video a like. What else should they do? They should also subscribe. They should subscribe. Thanks for watching. Because <laughs> there's enough gray in the world. Because there's enough gray in the world. Yeah. That's right. We all need some more color. Ha, ha, ha.